Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Mole Trap here, coming at you with another StarCraft commentary. And here today we have another game between Jadong is going to be the yellow Zerg up here in the 12 o'clock position of the map, Aztec. And Cal is going to be the green Protoss in the bottom right-hand corner of the map. Goes by Gujilla oftentimes. And uh, yeah, so this is going to be an exciting game. First off, let me mention that, yes, I am aware that there is no sound. Uh, my internet is out right now at my house and it, or at my apartment. It's been out for hours now. And I think there's some kind of glitch. I've tried to get it, the sound to work in StarCraft, but I think that there's some kind of glitch with the fact that it wouldn't sign on to Battle.net, which is kind of ridiculous that you need to sign on to Battle.net to get StarCraft to work. But, you know, here we go. Uh, here, you know, everything's signed on to online services these days. So, um, but in any case, sorry, the sound isn't working. Um, but I figured you guys would want a game without sound rather than no games. So, you know, if you don't want to watch it without sound, you don't have to watch. But I think it's going to be a good game. So I hope you guys enjoy it regardless. Uh, a few quick uh, things to go over, like some little... Uh, announcement type things before we get too started but by the way jadong with an early spawning pool which is a little bit interesting we got cal putting out his pile on here to set up for a forge expand more than likely he's going to scout this pretty quickly so he's going to be able to get a cannon first and not worry too much about this i think um he's going to need to get that forge up pretty quickly though he's got the money for it where's the probe okay he needs to get that he needs to get up pretty quick otherwise he's going to have to worry about these zerglings if he gets scouted Jadong is going to scout this location, and you can see he's actually going to run directly over towards where Cal is because he says, okay, well, this scout came in. Um, it's probably, a, a, the, just by the rate of the scout, it's probably coming from the bottom right position because it probably would have scouted first. So anyway, we do have the forge going down. Uh, let me do some quick uh, little announcements and stuff, though, first of all. So um, uh, first off, um, uh, I'm, I've decided on a date. I have a date picked out for the uh, finals that we're going to do for the live finals event, the FOSL finals for the ever OSL that I've been casting for the last month and a half. Um, you know, we're almost to the semifinals now, and then we're going to have the finals coming up. So I th what I'm going to do, I think, is um, November 20th at 2 p.m., which is the same date, same day of the week and time as uh, the last time I did it. And what is going on? I think he's maybe thinking about going to get a third and this probe is maybe like chilling, like trying to follow the drone if he's just to go to get a third or something like that. Um, because we did see Jadong, um, did he even make any Zerglings? I think he made, he like saw that he got scouted and was like, all right, well now that I've gotten scouted, uh, I can't get an attack off. So I'm not actually gonna actually make the attack. So he didn't even make any Zerglings. So that's pretty clever actually by Jadong. Um, saying, okay, well, I've been, I've been scouted, so I'm not going to actually, I'm going to know that he's going to react properly to this and, and not um, not even make the Zergling. So he's just been droning up like crazy here. Um, anyway, so November 20th, I'm not saying that's the date yet. This is a pr proposed date. And so just in case I want to like throw it out there, see what people think. Last time I said, well, what, what date do you guys want to do it? And everyone was just kind of like, oh, whenever, we'll show up whenever it is. So um, I'm assuming it's the same way this time. But I just want to put it out there first in case um, someone tells me like, oh, actually, this other tournament finals is the same day and you didn't realize it. And so you don't want to double up on that or something like that. So it is a little bit, it's after the ASL final. So I know it's not in com competition with that. But um, now we get some Zerglings popping out here. Now that he's gotten a lot of drones out to deal with that. And just, he just needs a couple Zerglings out. Otherwise, it's about time that a Zealot could be going across the map and harassing him if he wasn't being careful. So um, so anyways, let me know if there's any issues with November 20th, uh, basically. Um, the other thing I want to mention is we got a nice ZVP here going on. If you want to see some more ZVP with sound, um, then you can go ahead and check out StarCast TV which is a channel that actually uh, sponsors show matches uh, or show games between pro gamers in the modern day, in 2020, some of the top gamers, and um, then gives the replays to different commentators and casters to do casts of them, and they're all uploaded in the same place. And so I'm actually uh, starting to do casts for StarCast TV, so if you want to see um, one of my games that I put up on there between Snow and Queen, a.k.a. Zero, 
Um, that's up on uh, the StarCast TV web channel right now. So you can go check that out. I'll put a link to that in the description and also at the end as a linked video at the end of this video, if I remember to. Um, but uh, yeah, so that would be cool. So that's novel number two. I'm trying to get through these a little bit quickly, but this game is just ramping up. We do have a Spire coming up for Jadong. Um, single Stargate out. We have a Corsair that's going to pop out soon. It's going to be able to do some scouting. And um, that's kind of weird. If I hold the space bar down, it, j it jitters it. It doesn't follow it smoothly. I thought it would follow it smoothly. Um, anyway, uh, so it's going to scout this Spire pretty soon. We're going to see, are we going to have a, an, a battle for the air? Um, are we going to see Corsairs versus Mutas and Scourge? Sometimes you get the Spire just to make a couple Scourge um, instead of getting Hydralisks out to deal with the Corsairs. So we'll see with that. Um, oh, yeah. So the last thing I wanted to do was give a, this is definitely not the least, a very important shout out to Aaron and to Martin, who uh, gave me some big support on Ko-Fi. So thank you guys very much. I appreciate that a lot. Um, very, very generous of you guys. And um, if you want something more than just me saying your name, just shoot me a message and I'll, I'll give you a different shout out if you prefer. So, but um, support means a lot and helps me out a lot. So thank you very much again for that. So um, yeah, uh, in any case we do. So this game is going to be ramping up a little bit more now. And um, is this a, no, we got an Evo chamber. We got Hydralis Den going on over here. So looks like we're just making <clears throat> did he even make any scourge or anything like that? He's got some scourge out and he's got actually several scourge. He's going to try and intercept these, uh, the Corsair. Uh, he actually does land and kills off one of the Corsairs. The other scourge going down here took cannon fire from this and died off. So he does keep one there. But I mean, this is a thing where you really want to build up your Corsair count. And um, especially if you're getting plus one weapons for the air units, um, you know, you want to build up your Corsair account. Now, here's something that's really interesting. The Zealots, I didn't have a chance to mention it before. I was a little distracted. Have their speed upgrade and plus one weapons is about to finish. This is a nice little timing here for Cal running across the map with the speed legs, right? And these colonies are not yet morphed into sunken. So he may have an attack of opportunity here or an opportunity to attack where there's not much defense. Is he going to poke in? He sees the sunken. He's going to fall back. But is he going to try and rally more forces to deal with this? He's got another Zealot ongoing are coming up to join as well. The Scourge are kind of wishing they could dive bomb down and, and attack the ground. And Scourge have teeth. I didn't realize that before for some reason. Whoa, hold that. My mouse got out of control. He's actually attacking in with these Zealots after all. He says, I can take out the Zerglings. These Zealots are just chunky enough that they can just ignore the Sunken Colonies. Actually staying out of range of one of the Sunken Colonies as well. He's going to go for the Extractor. The drone's trying to attack. He's going to turn and attack the drones. The drones realize that they're mismatched and are going to go back to mining. And in the meantime, these zealots are actually going to get the extractor. That is actually a pretty big deal because gas is a huge, huge deal in the Zerg game. And you really, really need a lot of gas. And taking him down from, let's see, does he even have the second gas over here or third gas over here? No, he doesn't have the third gas. So from two gas to one is a pretty big deal. He's going to remake that. Uh, and of course, he has other gases he could take around the map. Um, but still, like taking out that second gas from mining, it's going to slow him down a lot. It means that means probably no mutalisks, right? Sometimes we'll see uh, Zergs will, if they think they can take out enough Corsairs, and actually a lot of Corsairs are being built over here. We've got six Corsairs with the plus one upgrade right now. And Cal's going back in with these Zealots again. These don't still don't give an F. They're just going to go in, ignore the colony fire and just go for attacks. He's going to try and attack the spore colony. Actually he almost gets it. He falls back and then goes back in for the final kill, kills off the spore colony. And so that's kind of interesting. He really wants to win the air battle. He's investing so much in all these Corsairs, plus one weapons for the Corsairs, two Stargates. He's making even another Corsair on top of that um, and killing off the spore colony. He wants control of the air and he has it. That is nine Corsairs, ladies and gentlemen. Nine plus one Corsairs is a lot of damage output in an AOE fashion. Uh, this is uh, the kind of army or air air army, I guess, that you that just can just basically stand up to anything. If they have a bunch of court, and look, he's actually supply blocked Zedong as well uh, by killing off some overlords along the way. He's just kind of coming around and hunting for overlords, but this is enough Corsairs that you can just stand in place, and if Scourge attack you, even from two different angles, I believe you can just, just kill them all before they get to you, basically. If you just, if you just hold position, you kind of have to be gutsy and not try and run away from the Scourge, and uh, you can kill them before they get to you. And even in large numbers, 
The Corsairs, because they do AoE damage, are going to take those out. Looks like he's trying to get another... Oh, is he going to get this shuttle with these Scourge? I think these were just scouting Scourge, but he actually gets in there and gets the shuttle. That is actually a pretty big deal. Um, I don't think anything was in that shuttle. We have these Scourge blocking for shuttles going around to do a drop as well, by the way. So good scouting there by Jadong. Uh, not a lot of vision on the map right now, now that the Overlords have been cleared off. So he's kind of going a little bit blind, or driving a little bit blind. And here's why... I mean, these, here's one of the reasons why you get the spore colonies, right? Because the Dark Templar, uh, you know, if you don't have a spore there, the Corsairs with this many of them, and just and those Scourge, those scourge uh, just kind of wandering by, just dying on move command. Um, yeah, if you don't have spore colonies, the Corsairs in this number can just kill off overlords very quickly. And, um, and I guess these guys have a truce. These Scourge just flying right by. Okay, never mind, no truce. He goes back to kill him. Um, but yeah, you can just kill off the overlords quickly and then run the DTs in and do a significant damage. And so, um, and he actually replaces those Scourge in a nice little holding spot to, to scout for shuttles as well. Corsair's just going around hunting for overlords. And we can see that at every base, he's got static defenses, spores and sunks. Uh, actually, one sunken, it looks like he's going to build a spore colony here as well over in this extra base. And that is partly because... Um, Oh, did he just lose a Corsair? He just lost a Corsair to some Scourge. Um, so that's interesting. But he saw that he was making shuttles. And actually, a second robotics facility is down now, so he's really going to invest in the Robotech there. Um, but, uh, oh, he's ferried in uh, an Archon, a couple Zealots, and actually, um, Jadong does not see this coming. He's got some defenses building in here regardless as a preventative measure because he thought this might be a possibility, but he's only got one sunken colony here. We're going in with several zealots and an archon. He's going to come back in here with possibly a reaver as well. Is there a reaver in the shuttle? There is not. There's dark templars in the shuttle and he's actually taken out the spore colony. So there's no vision to kill off those DTs, but the hydras fall back to the overlords and the Corsairs are slacking off a little bit over on the side and they're not going to be able to kill off these overlords quickly enough. The dark templar go down. He is going to get a significant amount of overlords. They're huge, huge hit. Jadong is now 20 supply, 25 supply below zero, basically. Um, he does eventually kill off all of those forces, but he gets uh, severely supply blocked. Um, he's making uh, some, making several overlords right now, so he's not going to be supply locked for long. Consume is almost upgraded as well, by the way, and that is a huge deal. Look at the Defiler Mound, um, and uh, we do have actually some stuff going on in the middle. Whoa. Very close up Zerglings. Zerglings are going to come in here to this expansion, this new expansion of Cal, and try and cancel it. And uh, they are, I believe, crack upgraded Zerglings. So he's actually going right to work on this Nexus. And actually, are these Zealots going to be able to kill off the Zerglings before they can kill the Nexus? It's draining hit points. It's almost dead, but the Zealots do kill it off in time. That Nexus is going to warp in with a little over 200 hit points left. So very, very close call there, actually, for the, uh, the Nexus. Um, but the Zealots do clean up. But, uh, but yeah, defilers are out, and I was just noticing that, like, the building is actually really... I don't know if I've ever looked at the building that closely. It looks like there's, like, rocks. There's, like, stone structures or crystals, and then, like, the defiler mound is, like, a, a biomass, like, around the rocks. You can see it pulsing, like, in between or whatever. It's kind of weird. Anyway, um, Cal going in with some zealots. They're just going to, like, try and suicide in there, and they're not going to get anything done. But we do have consume upgraded on these defilers. They all have energy for swarms, and that is huge because, you know, what we saw here with... The, uh, well, the, you know, the Zerglings running in, you see how fast they were able to kill that Nexus, right? If you just plant down one swarm on the cannons, send in the Zerglings, they can kill stuff off very quickly. And hold that thought because we do have a little bit of an attack going on over here. I missed it for a moment, but it looks like the, uh, lurkers have defended it very quickly. So nothing really doing there. And what is actually in these shuttles? We got a Reaver in one of them, two Reavers in the, actually, actually three Reavers dropped out there. So I'm sorry I missed that if there was uh, much damage. It looks like, there might have been, no, these, I think these these colonies were previously damaged, so not sure what happened there. Jadon getting up his fifth base, though. And this is a mineral only, so he's not going to be at five gas, but he's got one, two, three, and does he have, yeah, he has all four gases up right now. And that is going to enable him to produce these heavy gas units like the Defilers. And uh, looks like a couple more Corsairs did go down as well. Sorry, I've missed a couple different spots on the map. I'm sorry I was so busy looking at the Defiler mound. That uh, that I that I missed a couple Corsairs dying, but he's gonna try and come in here to this fifth base and almost loses a shuttle 
A little lost to Templar in that shuttle really, really right quickly. He actually distracts off to the left to make himself a landing zone to get these Reavers out. And is he going to be able to kill everything off in time before these Reavers actually go down? The Reavers get plagued along with the shuttles, but they are getting a lot of damage out and they kill tons and tons of ground units. Now, there is no Observer, so he can't actually do anything about these Lurkers, but he's going to pick up and leave having dealt a significant amount of damage there and not lost the Reavers, crucially. Is he going to lose him to these Corsairs, though? Oh, the Corsairs went on the wrong course. They were just a little bit off, aimed off. Uh, if they kept going this direction, they might have caught up with him. Or if they'd come this way a little bit earlier, they might have caught those shuttles. That would have been huge. That would have been basically GG, actually. Uh, losing three, rubber, three Reavers and three shuttles, uh, a couple Templars in the shuttles as well, would have been a massive deal. Um, that I'm not sure Cal could come back from. Instead, he does have significant Reavers. Look at that, five Reavers in these shuttles. He can move them around very efficiently with that. And actually, do we have... We've got a counter drop, though, that Cal... I'm sorry, that Jadong is planning on Cal. And Cal has moved out his entire army at just this moment. He's running Corsairs around trying to get free damage, but he's losing some in the meantime. They're not really accomplishing anything. He may be trying to draw things out because he's going for an attack with his ground army, trying to kill off this fifth... But at the same time, Jadong is going in for a drop into the main. It's not really a doom drop, but it's significant. He's going to get a lot of units out here. And Cal's entire force is now off uh, on the other side of the map right now. And he says, I'm not going to turn around. There's no way I can get back in time to defend this. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go for the trade. And he actually is ignoring this base uh, or not like focusing on it. Instead, he's moving in. He knows that this rally point spot is the real... Um, the real prize. In the meantime, he's just basically sacrificing his main. Corsair's coming in here to die. They're going to not really get any Overlord kills. It looks like they're just going to die to the Hydralis, so that's the end of the Corsair army that he spent so much time and money building up. Jadong did lose um, a, a couple Overlords, maybe, but hold that thought again. The Reavers are in danger here. He storms a nice storm. There's actually one, only one Hydralis left. It's hard to, to concentrate on both battles going on right now. Cal is trying to get control of of this rally point if he can get in here where the forces are rallied and split up the reinforcements that are going to be coming from two different angles it's gonna be a lot easier to hold that all of those storms killed so many units are turning into archons now in the meantime cal is basically just using his reinforcement reavers to try and defend this um they get plagued but he's just kind of holding back he's not trying to he's continuing to send reinforcements to the front Cal is betting everything on this push. He's sacrificing his main in order to get this done. The Archons in the Storms do lots of damage underneath the Swarms. The Reavers actually hiding underneath these Swarms are going to make it easier for them to survive against the Hydralisks as well. And he's actually killed everything underneath the Swarms. So Cal may have done it right here. He's pushed through. He's killed off the units underneath the Dark Swarms. And he's going to be able to push through them. Um, he still has a couple Reavers. They have been plagued, but they're still alive. And they can still do just as much damage, even with very little hit points. And now he's going to try and push into this rally point there. There's a lot of Hydralis coming out from the, from the front. There's a lot of Zerglings coming in from the back. Is this going to be too many forces? It's actually a beleaguered small force just with Reavers to to accompany. He picks up the rivers. He drops them back down. Can they kill us stuff enough in time? No, they cannot. There's just too much firepower. Even Zerglings are able to kill Reavers in enough numbers, and he actually kills off that entire force. And while this is happening, Cal has been losing buildings in his main. He's actually not lost a lot. He's not supply blocked or anything like that. He only lost um, really of value a couple gateways and a couple stargates, and he wasn't planning on using those stargates anyway. This force is going to finally get cleaned up, and uh, the Scourge is just looking around wishing it could find that observer in the air but uh cal's force out on the map is going to get cleaned up and that is actually pretty huge because now cal has no map presence and jadong and that's what he realizes no map presence he bet everything on that push did not succeed jadong has is able to get this back up look he's even get this base he's getting this base as well so jadong was getting so much of the map because he couldn't i mean Cal couldn't do anything about it. Losing all those Reavers, all those shuttles, all those ground forces, it was going to take him too long to build up. And while he built up another army, Jadong was going to take the map. And um, it looked like Cal was trying to defend, uh, where was it, uh, one of these other bases. I didn't see where it was, but I. But for a second, he was trying to trying to get another base. And, uh, you know, he wasn't going to be able to keep another base. So I think it was right here. He was trying to, trying to, there's no base here. So I'm not sure why he put a cannon there. But anyway... Um, wow. So <laughs> thanks very much for watching. Uh, again, apologies for no sound, but that was a pretty cool game. Um, but, uh, Cal just could not pull it off. Very gutsy of him 
to push out and just try and counterattack. And it almost worked. It almost worked. But Jadong had too much economy, too much stuff that he was able to rally from around the map and was able to take out that force as it dwindled because his production facilities were dead and under attack. So he wasn't able to reinforce as much, right? Imagine if he had two extra gateways pumping units, if he had more reavers and, and dragoons reinforcing this spot, then he could have theoretically held that spot and taken the game. But because of that drop, taking that out at the crucial moment, it wasn't able to do it. So anyway, GG, thanks for watching. Um, again, my internet is out. So hopefully you guys are going to be able to see this if I can get to a coffee shop and upload this. Um, I actually really need to do that because I'm, I've got a short-term work project that ends this week and I really need to download some files to actually do it. So... Um, I need to find some way of getting some internet. So hopefully I'll be able to upload this when I can. Otherwise, this might be out a little bit later. But um, I'm actually up recording this um, about a week, less than a week before the election in the United States. And um, I know everyone's been saying, you know, vote, 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 vote. And I just want to add one thing to that that may be a little bit different than what you've been hearing. And just I'm not going to get political one way or the other um, in this particular video, although I have been political in general, admittedly. But... Um, one thing I want to mention, which is kind of interesting that I found out that is kind of election related that might be of interest to you guys is, um, you know, people are saying vote, 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 get out and vote. But uh, people are much more likely to act if they have a plan to vote. And, and you've probably heard that as well. But it means, you know, if they envision how they're going to vote, right, um, then that makes it more likely. So instead of just saying go vote, say you know, where are you going to vote? Where's your polling place? What day are you going to do it? What time? Like if you ask people questions and make them visualize the process of doing it, then it's more likely to have an effect. So that's my one little pertinent piece of uh, election advice. Um, if you guys are trying to get your friends and family to participate in the election in the United States, then there's a little bit of an extra tactic for you. And I mean, just talking to friends and family is more effective than talking to strangers on the internet as well. So um, that's something to think about too, you know? So talk to your family and tell them, hey, you know what, where are you gonna vote? Have you done it yet? Where are you gonna go? Where are you gonna drop off your ballot? Where are you gonna stand in line? Do you have the time set aside, et cetera, et cetera? And that's gonna be a more effective way of making sure people get out there. Because one thing I will say is that this election is super, super important. And uh, I, you know, I don't really wanna apologize for, for mentioning it because it's, it is, it's, frankly, I know this is blasphemous, but I think this election is more important than StarCraft. And so um, I, I do hope that people go out and, and make a plan if you haven't already and figure out where and when you're going to vote and go participate. And if you're not in the United States, then I'm sorry that the last like month or two or 10, you've had to listen to so much talk about the election in the United States because it's just been everywhere and everyone's been talking about it. It's been all over the internets. So um but it will be over soon. At least the election part will be over soon, but not uh, whatever comes after the election. So anyway, I guess I will end it there and stop rambling. But uh, if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. And again, if you want some more ZVP action, go check out StarCast TV. There's probably going to be a link popping up on this video on YouTube at the moment. And if not, then the description will hopefully have a link as well. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. GG. Take care.